José Gómez André um, is a postdoctoral researcher and um, lecturer in political theory at the University of Lisbon. He's going to present today a paper called um, Federalism and the Future of Democracy. Thank you very much. Uh, I have then a question for Stephen. My presentation is a bit, a bit different on the theme. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, my theme is on federalism and the future of democracy, which is the basic theme of my postdoctoral research, but uh, it is still a work in progress. So uh, I would like very much to hear your uh, comments, observations, even aggressive critiques are welcomed. Um, the concept of modern democracy, which I think all of us see as politically and philosophically hegemonic uh, during the 20th century, has its roots in the great liberal revolutions of the 18th century, and it is linked to a set of principles that we all uh, widely acknowledge. Free elections, political representation, a multi-party system, a rule of law as the expression of popular will, as Professor Diaz explained uh, before, legal limits to govern, government action, separation of powers, the separation of church and state, the recognition of several individual rights. And I think all these values are still indispensable to the maintenance of uh, present democracies and even very pertinent in some areas of the globe, particularly Asia and Africa. But I think one of the problems of the so-called crisis of democracy is precisely the fact that these ideas uh, were brought in the end of the 18th century and are somehow insufficient to fully answer the new challenges posed by contemporary democratic societies. And I would only announce uh, four or five major problems of democracy nowadays. One is certainly globalization. Uh, democracy born, uh, was born with the nation state and was not and I think is not fully prepared to deal with new frames of international cooperation migrations, global economy, etc. The second problem is, uh, of course, the, the place of and the role of minorities, because in the 18th century, basically, democracies, uh, well, in the United States and then in France, didn't have a very important ethnic minorities, and now we have, and we have, um, democracy still has to uh, think about the place of such minorities in the democratic compound. A third, and perhaps the most important problem of democracy nowadays is the unchecked growth of economic powers, uh, usually sustained in laws and processes external to the democratic framework. Then we have the dominance of party machines over political action uh, the uh, with, that have limited the participation of common people in the political process, the rise of densely bureaucratic administrations, centralization, the growth of the state, corruption, etc., and also the separation of civil society and the political power. So we have uh, democratic countries which don't really have a strong accountability of the political agents. And so I think all these factors have led to a progressive weakening of current democracies controlled by incapable political elites and marked by an inop inoperative civil society and the growing distance between citizens and the political deliberation. And our paper aims to consider potential solutions to these problems, reassessing particularly the benefits of federalism, which is not obviously a definitive solution, but I think can surely make an impact in tackling some of these problems. But uh, to do so, I think we need to initially clarify the nature and meaning of federalism, which is almost a forbidden word in Europe, particularly, um, especially because political actors very critical of European integration uh, still uh, give us misleading indications that probably were born when Margaret Thatcher spoke of federalism as the construction of a superstate. 
David, uh, David Galloway wrote in 2001, still speaking of a federal European government, is a super state subsuming the member states and merging their people, their peoples into a single demos, end of quotation. So I think there is a major uh, confusion in the de political debate and even in academic debate that confounds federalism with centralization. When in truth, uh, the word of federalism is precisely the opposite. So it comes from the Latin fides, which means trust, and foidus, which means pact or agreement. And indeed, it implies a cooperative relation between several entities with common goals, which leads to a political union, certain, with a, cert a central government, but the central government must obviously coexist side by side with concurrent power structures. And so in a federal association, the political decisions don't emanate from one single organ or a superstructure or a superstate, but occur within an intricate matrix of concomitant power entities that are permanently connected to each other. Daniel Halazar, one of the great uh, writers on contemporary federalism, said in one sentence the main uh, essence of federalism. Federal principles, and I'm quoting, are concerned with a combination of self-rule and shared rule. And in the European debate, it seems that federalism only represents a kind of concentration of power that has nothing to do with its essence, which is the combination of self-rule and shared rule. Uh, quoting Elazar, as a political principle, federalism has to do with the constitutional diffusion of power, so that the constituting elements in a federal arrangement share in the processes of common policy making and administration by right, while the common government are conducted in such a way as to maintain their respective integrities. So the states maintain their respective integrities. That is a very forgotten aspect uh, when people talk about federalism. So in a clear contrast with unitarian forms of government, which is typically set in a fixed hierarchy, with political processes occurring mainly through vertical decisions, federalist associations chiefly depend on horizontal connections, shared decisions, and dialogues between different legal and political authorities. The modus operandi of federalism is then the collaboration between various political units, which are not subsumed under a unique authority, but instead preserved as consistent parts of a manifold building. And so I think in it's taken in this appropriate sense, federalism can, in fact, contribute to the promotion of democratic values for the reasons we will further and very briefly expose. I would like to basically present five or six main um, areas of thought and, of, of course, of political action when, uh, which federalism can help. First, of course, because federalism represents one of the most efficient checks and balances of political action as it multiplies the vigilance mechanisms of a democratic system. So it creates additional levels of government, and uh, this simple division of power represents a more, uh, an important bulwark against corruption, against centralization, against uh, political abuses. Relying on the wariness nature of authority, federalism promotes then a zealous caution between power structures as they try to avoid encroachments on their specific prerogatives, which tend therefore to maintain the political action within a realm of restricted competences. The second aspect that uh, I think federalism can contribute to the promotion of democracy is certainly because of how it promotes autonomy uh, and uh, decentralization. At a policy level, this encourages dynamics of proximity between the political actors and the common citizens who can see their aspirations and needs more quickly and accurately answered. At the same time, the responsibility of the political agents in face of their constituents is increased as the public decisions tend to be connected more with the local aspects of the political decisions. If, one, if, on one hand, federalism seeks to amplify political representation, on the other, it aims for the same reason to maximize popular participation in political affairs. And that is one of my surprises when we talk about how we need to 
uh, update democracy is that we don't speak really of federalism because we tend to see federalism in this mis mischieved idea as creating a more distance to people. The idea is exactly the opposite, the opposite, which is to create local mechanisms of decision. And uh, I think not only in the European level, but also even inside countries that compose Europe, this would be clearly a um, strong way to uh, lead the common people, if you can say that, uh, and approximate them to the um, uh, political and decision-making processes. Due to its natural predisposition to polycentrism and diffusive administrative patterns, federalism does create multiple arenas for political organization and mobilization. And in fact, I think this, and this leads us, lead us to the third point, which is that federalism allows us to reconsider the main aspect of citizenship. As Benjamin Constant uh, famously uh, spoke in this, uh, the, the difference between the liberty of the ancients and the, the liberty of the moderns, he kind of uh, understood that the, when we speak of the individual as his private life, then we lose the liberty as the ancients saw it, which is the idea that what really makes an individual is its right and its duty to participate in the political arena. And I think Constant, was, which was writing, who was writing in the beginning of the 19th century, could not see how, in fact, we even put that, uh, we even made it greater. Nowadays, the real space of individuality is its own private life. So it's almost like a kind of separation of the public and of the private. And I think if we really uh, take federalism in this idea of a more participation of local communities, we could return to this idea of a more broad citizenship, which is not only the right of the individual to himself, but is also his duty and his right, of course, to participate in the political arena. Um, and, well, there are classical formulations of this idea. Thomas Jefferson, for instance, uh, spoke of the, a new political unit, which was the ward. Ward, something of kind of, uh, uh, in Spanish, would be municipalism, a, a way of not only to have the federal government and state government and the county government, but even a kind of more local government, which he called a small republic within itself. Uh, so uh, really to put people even more directly in the decisions of, um, of the political process. And of course, Jefferson was not attended, but still in America, this idea of uh, the local communities with major pro uh, powers in education, in uh, policy making is really important. Of course, more contemporary uh, writers are speaking about this. Michael Sandel in particular, the communitarian school, which sees... Uh, in the benefits of self-government, division of power, and a genuine participation of individuals in the decision-making process. A fourth idea which I would like to present, it comes from uh, what we are speaking about. It comes from the idea that, of course, as it creates more structures of government, federalism creates also multiple arenas for political organization and mobilization. So it shapes patterns of democratic representation, generally expanding the scope of territorial representation. A major example comes from Will Kimlicka in Canada, which says that basically federalism is a weapon for Quebec to have a more uh, direct participation in political process. A fifth idea is the, uh, the relation between federalism and parties. Federalism can also produce relevant democratic improvements in the way political parties operate decentralizing their organization and their political platform. Through the powers they convey to political actors located at different points in the various government structures, federal systems can reshape the nature of party competition and the incentives for politicians, forcing a greater adaptation to regional and local ambitions. On the other hand, the already mentioned model of proximity between representatives and constituents contributes to a larger accordance of political actions and the true interests of the common citizens. So the, the, the idea here is to fight one of the most dangerous concepts of uh, modern political debate, which is national interest. 
It's a kind of replacement of the reason of state that we were spoke in 17th or 18th century. And basically the national interest is a, a weapon used by political politicians to subscribe and to justify any kind of action which is totally undemocratic or even indifferent to the real concerns of the people, but as a kind of legitimate, legitimizing power that we cannot touch, we cannot see, but is almost definitive. Um, and so I think the idea that uh, a kind of subdivision of parties within several region, uh, regions can also promote this, uh, the idea that parties link to the communities and to the local interests and not only this kind of the representatives of a national interests that forget divisions within countries. Sixth, and I think, uh, yes, the final question is regarding pluralism and minorities. And I think federalism fosters pluralism by facilitating the access of minorities to political process, uh, of course, since the existence of multiple levels of government widens the chances of specific groups to make their voice heard. Uh, Rudolf Reck, Reck uh, spoke about it, and I'm quoting. He says, minorities in a party may have a stronghold at regional level which would give them better opportunities to promote their case within the national organization. So it creates basically a social and political network previous to government election set upon a clear principle of civic intervention. I think in this way, and this is the way as James Madison puts it, the factions are in a way groups consistent of people concerned only with their own interests. But the fact that we can multiply these factions, we can also promote a more broad and more wide debate about the priorities of society in general which is also the idea that uh, Arendt Leipart has uh, worked in his consocialism theory, which is the idea that the most important feature of democracy is uh, the government by consensus and by uh, so, uh, avoiding the supermajority. The case where a social or political majority can, in fact, decide everything for the minority if, in fact, this minority doesn't have any kind of uh, political and institutional framework to, uh, to affirm and to sustain their own priorities. And uh, to conclude, the, despite our analysis, which is, of course, very brief, the idea, I think, is to speak in just 20 minutes. It is important to state, and so I'm not only, I'm not this optimism of uh, that federalism is, has all the solutions, uh, but in fact, I think it, it's more an instrument to tackle such problems. And this happens first and obviously because democracy is an organism too much complex to be sustained in a single concept or political framework, but also because federalism has its own imperfections. And I would only enumerate three of them. One, of course, is the incapacity of federalism to contain the economical forces in a globalized world. So if I say that one of the major problems of democracy is the unchecked growth of economic powers, I don't think federalism has a good answer to it. And I think uh, uh, the United States of America are a good example of it because they have a federation and still they are one of the major uh, countries where the economic powers are, in fact, uh, having uh, too much um, str uh, strength. The second problem is the inability of federalism to address political bu bureaucracy. Uh, in fact, federalism multiplies it because it creates more levels of government and then, uh, as uh, all Europeans here in the room know, it creates a kind of bureaucratic nightmare uh, that makes it uh, very difficult to, uh, pro uh, to create this kind of proximity between political agents and um, the people. And third, because uh, federalism does not have an ontological or moral, moral intrinsic value, value. And then it depends as other regimes or political models on the capacities of the individuals in the decision processes. It can therefore only be seen as an auxiliary mechanism and not as a solution per se of democracy's problems. Thank you for your attention.